Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Monsito webinar, Unlock a Better Website in 2023, Trip, Tips and Tricks for Marketers and Communicators. We will just be hanging out for a couple more minutes to let people sign on. But in the meantime, I'd love to hear where you're calling in from. So I am in Copenhagen in Denmark, and my colleague Alex, you're in London, right? Yep. Cloudy, gray London. Well, you know what? Copenhagen is also very cloudy and gray today. So uh, hopefully we can make everything sparkle a little bit more <laughs> with our presentation. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the chat open here so I can see what everyone is chatting in from. But for some reason, my chat is not cooperating. So let me try to open the chat preview which for some reason is not cooperating today. All right, I will just stop sharing my screen for a second then to see if I can get that working while Alex and I are still on. Oh, we have someone from Copenhagen. Oh, that is South, lovely. South our, Korea. Wow. South Korea, wow, welcome. Thanks for joining us. That's very exciting. All right, I'm going to try to share my screen again and see if we can get it working with the with the chat otherwise at least it sounds like you can see it alex so you'll be our our chat person <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll keep an eye you keep, keep an, an eye, eye on it <laughs> perfect i can see we have more and more people signing in welcome we are going to be getting started in just about a minute or so but in the meantime we'd love just to hear where all of you are joining us from and i am in copenhagen my colleague alex here is in london in the uk And unfortunately, my no. my chat. Paris, still refuses we've, we've got to Paris there. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on it. Paris, hello. the Netherlands. Paris, Netherlands. Hello, welcome. That's awesome. Israel, Oslo. Oh, there's, there's people from all over the place. Fantastic, awesome. fantastic. <clears throat> all right, I think we've given the grace minute, so let's go ahead and get started. So again. Welcome everyone to today's Monsito webinar, Unlocking a Better Website in 2023. We've got lots of tips and tricks for marketers and communicators and website managers today. So we're very excited um, to be sharing all of those with you. Before we kick it off, I did just wanna go through a few quick housekeeping uh, notes. So of course, as always, when you're joining us on a Monsito webinar, we do have live transcription available here via Zoom. So if that is something that you would like to take advantage of, please do feel free to enable it. In addition, the recording will also have closed captions. Um, so please do keep an eye out for that if that's something you'd like to take advantage of afterwards when you're watching the recording. And we will send the recording and the slides after the session. It does just take us about one or two days to get um, all of the slides and the recording sorted. So please do just keep a lookout for it in your inbox at the start of next week. And then last but not least, of course, we encourage questions of all kinds. Please do just feel free to put them in the questions panel and we will address them all towards the end of the session where we have a dedicated Q&A. Um, if we do not get to all of the questions during the session, what we typically try to do is we'll follow up with you personally afterwards. So don't be shy, do feel free to ask and we will make sure to follow up with you as well. I'll let my colleague Alex introduce himself first and then I'll jump into it afterwards. Thanks, Jasmine. Yep, uh, thanks for joining everyone. Yeah, I'm uh, obviously Alex, uh, yeah, over here in, in London. Um, yeah, I oversee the the European sales team here at Monsido. So um, yeah, I've actually been in the whole kind of web governance, web accessibility kind of space for just over 10 years now. So um, yeah, hopefully I have a few interesting uh, tips and insights and stuff that I can share on this call today. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. And I know you definitely do because I, as the marketing person, I'm always going to and asking, hey, what are our clients doing? Because I want to utilize some of those website tips and tricks as well. So my name is Jasmine de Guzman. I'm the director of international marketing here at Monsito. Uh, I've been in the website space for the past five, six years. So also really understand where all of you as marketers and communicators are coming from, making sure that your website is optimized for your audience and making sure that you're really making the most out of your digital presence. 
And for those of you who are not familiar with Moncito, I did just want to give a little bit of a quick uh, introduction to who we are um, and what our soft our platform does. Um, so as Alex mentioned, he's based out of the UK, I'm based out of Copenhagen, but we do have a global presence, but we've also got a great presence here in, in Europe with lots of fantastic um, clients, uh, as you can see here on the screen. And what we do for them is our platform scans your website and tells you if you have different issues and errors and how to quickly uh, correct them. And it also sends you a weekly report so that you can make sure that you're continuously staying on top of it, which I know as a marketer is something that's incredibly important and sometimes difficult to do when you have many content contributors on your website. So just a quick uh, intro to what we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to be talking about, of course, why it's still so important for you to be optimizing your website as we're going into the new year. I know we're all doing lots of planning and trying to figure out what our priorities should be. We're going to talk a little bit about the difference between website optimization and compliance, because these are two things that um, are very near and dear to our hearts and, and, and are incredibly important in taking into consideration and knowing what the difference is in your priorities. And then we're going to just share a couple of examples of um, some of the top issues that we see when we talk with our clients and how um, we recommend that they go about addressing them. We've got a couple of real life examples and then we'll hop into the Q&A. But we did just want to kick it off with a little bit of an icebreaker, and that is what is your biggest challenge or website challenge going into 2023? So I'm just going to launch the poll right now, and it should pop up on your screens. So are really keen if, if um, lack of time and resources, unclear website goals and priorities, outdated technology are not any of your biggest challenges. We'd love to still know, so feel free to drop that in the chat. I'm just going to leave this open for a little bit longer, but I can see about 40% of you have voted so far, 60%, 75% love seeing the engagement. That's fantastic. All right, I'm going to close it and share the results. All right, so as you can see, 66% of you uh, actually said, say that lack of time and resources is your biggest challenge. You know what? You're not alone. I was just on LinkedIn looking at a thread about how do you best evaluate the return on investment of your MarTech stack. And for me, the biggest thing is I need a tool that can save me, save me time because that will ultimately save me resources so I can get more done with less. Unclear website goals and priorities, 20% of you. I think that is a very common thing, um, not having um, buy-in from the entire organization and understanding why your website is so, so important and outdated, outdated technology. Um, switching out um, your website CMS or doing a redesign, for example, is a really big thing. So I, I completely understand that that is also a challenge. And especially as you're migrating content, for example, you wanna make sure you're not moving any of that um, outdated content um, along with that te new technology. Well, thank you so much for sharing everyone. And let's jump right into it. So I'm just going to talk really quickly about why optimizing your website is still so important. I feel like I've been talking about websites for the past six years. But the reality is, is this how you're finding information in 2023? No, unless you're maybe my grandparents who still read the newspaper the actual reality of 2023, and we, we all know this is going to continue, is that you're probably using some form of digital way to get information, whether it is the good old search engine, everybody loves Google. I know some people out there are still Bing fans. <laughs> um, social media profiles, I think we'd be remiss not to say that social media is playing a, a bigger, bigger, a bigger and bigger role in how we consume information, how we share information. And then of course, word of mouth, is still one of the ways that we share information. But the one thing that all of these have in common is that if you're getting information and you're searching it afterwards to try to get it confirmed, what do you, what do, you do when something like this happens? And I actually scared Alex when I showed him this screenshot at first because our London office is right across from Italy and it's not actually permanently closed. So he was like, wait, what is this? And I think a lot of us as consumers can probably recognize if a place that we expect to be open uh, and we're searching and we come across information like this, what is the next step of what we're going to do? I know that personally, the next step for me would be to click on this website button right here 
to get this information confirmed. And that was my point exactly, is that your website is this digital data hub for you. So whether you are consuming information through word of mouth, through social media, you're getting it through search results, map results, or Google business listings, a lot of the time when people want deeper information about your business or your organization or your services or products that you offer, they are going to go to your website. And that is exactly why it is so incredibly important to continue to be optimizing your website in 2023. It's not okay to just set it and forget it and have your website as kind of a digital business card. It needs to continuously be updated and making sure that it's a living, breathing piece of digital work that's representing your business. So before I hand it off to Alex, I think what, what I just want to uh, end on is um, you need to make sure that your website is not only optimized, but also compliant. And the reason you need to do that is because like I was showing you that screenshot, your website needs to be that trusted information source with all the credible information. And there's a lot of different elements that go into that. And those are some of the things that we're going to talk about today, because all of these different aspects all play into delivering a good website experience for your users and making you an attractive business or organization to engage with. And with that, I'll hand it off to Alex to talk a little bit about the difference between compliance and optimization. Nice one. Thanks, uh, thanks, Jasmine. Yeah, so I think uh, an important thing to, to have a think about really is, is the difference between compliance and optimization, right? I think often kind of the two get clouded and sometimes just think of people just think about maybe optimization as everything. And actually there is, there is quite a difference there and a, a few different things to take into account. I think both require a bit of a, a different approach, to be honest. So um, yeah, let's just start with the sort of definition of, of each. So yeah, website optimization, that is quite simply all about, um, yeah, just looking to improve your website. So what can you do to improve the site and ultimately ensure that the, the end user experience on that site is a, is a positive one, right? So it could be really simple things like, um, you know, ensuring that there aren't broken links or uh, misspelled words, things like that on a website. Um, website compliance, on the other hand, that's more looking at the um, what you need to do to actually achieve certain standards or be compliant in line with certain guidelines or laws. Um, you know, an example could be with with web accessibility, you've got the, the web content accessibility guidelines 2.1, um, data privacy, it could be GDPR. Um, it's, it can also be things that aren't even necessarily laws, but more just things that you want to follow. So, you know, if we talk about SEO, it could be following certain uh, guidelines that Google provide, for example. So there's, you know, the, there's quite a difference between the two. I think both require different approaches. And it's, it's, it's important when you're kind of analyzing things with your website to, to kind of decide what, what goes into, into each bucket and then sort of take it from there really. Just move to the, the next one. Um, yeah, just going into the, the kind of the, the why. Um, yeah, obviously with, with website optimization, I kind of touched on it there. Um, you know, it's all about um, brand reputation really. So, you know, ensuring that you've got a reliable and, and trustworthy source of information um, for your business is obviously really important you know we use that Italy example um the, that uh, Jasmine had there you know the the information showing on on Google there was actually incorrect so you know it's important that someone goes to visit the website they actually get the, the right information um you know ease of use obviously really important you know people are people are quite impatient these days we need to make sure that the websites are nice and easy to use easy to navigate easy to find the information that you want to, to find. Um, and of course, inclus inclusivity, you know, ensuring that your site is accessible for, for everyone, you know, regardless of their disability, language, whatever, um, that's, that's super important when we're talking about optimization. Um, yeah, compliance, obviously kind of touched on this when, when I was talking in the last slide there, but, um, you know, typically it will be things required by, by law. So, you know, there, there are certain laws for, for particularly for things like web accessibility, um, yeah, GDPR, stuff like that. Um, but as I said, there, there could be other things, you know, you know, compliance could even come into, you know, internal rules, guidelines that, that you actually have as an organization. Um, you know, most organizations have some kind of style guide, for example, when they're um, adding content to a website. So, you know, compliance could come into that could come into that kind of section as well, really. 
Cool. Um, yeah, just uh, just to go into some sort of top website compliance and optimization issues. I think um, I think the next slide's yours, Jasmine, right? It is. Yeah, remembering this off the top of my head. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, thanks, Alex. And I think you make a lot of really great points. So just to actually, I'll just frame it a little bit for all of you. Um, we're going to go through five different kind of areas of either optimization or compliance, as you can hear, um, depending on your organization, the lines between optimization and compliance are very, there is a fine line between them. Uh, and depending on your organization, it is important to understand or to decide how you want to tackle them. Um, so we're going to jump into all into five different things that we've commonly seen. Uh, and some of these might be feel like back to basics, but for me, the start of the year and as we're going into 2023, it's very important to go back to basics and set up, set a plan for the new year, set yourself up to, for success. And so that's really what we're going to jump into. So the first one that I have is um, around optimizing to ensure that you have impeccable content quality. And for me as a marketer, one of the most annoying things to possibly get, and I'm sure some of you on here probably recognize it, is getting an email from someone in sales or someone uh, or one of your customers saying, hey, did you know that there is a typo on this page? Or hey, did you know that there's a broken link on this other page? It's incredibly frustrating. We all spend a lot of time making sure that our websites are a good representation of our organization. So something like a small spelling error um, or a broken link are things that can cause an incredibly frustrating user experience, but it's also a little bit uh, de detrimental because it also reflects on your um, part of the organization that is in charge of taking care of that. So my kind of top tips um, for these or looking at these kinds of errors is of course, use a spell checker. A, a little fun fact, Monsito actually started as a broken link checker uh, all, uh, many years ago, uh, but using a broken link checker or using a spell checker are incredibly important and kind of fast ways to make sure that you're not letting these simple things get in the way of your um, success of your website. Um, in terms of typos and misspellings, another kind of simple example that I always encourage people uh, to do is put your content into Word. I don't ever let anyone put content um, when we're working on our website directly into the website editor or the CMS, because then there's just a much higher risk of there being errors. So always putting it into some kind of Word um, format or processor that has spell check already before. And then of course, I always encourage people to read your content out loud. If you're reading the content out loud, you'll be much quicker to pick up any uh, gram grammatical errors, typos, or misspellings. When it comes to broken links, uh, my top tip is really that um, make sure you establish a kind of pre-publishing uh, process. Um, so make, making sure that someone's testing all the links before you have some kind of scanner that checks all the links before. And then of course, if you're archiving pages, make sure that you are um, implementing 301 redirects because that is, at least for internal broken links on a page, a very common um, mistake. And then the other thing that, that comes to um, impeccable content quality, and Alex kind of touched upon it in terms of um, website optimization, it is that not everyone's native language is English. And so, and even for the people who are, readability and literacy, especially on websites, is a thing that is very, very commonly overlooked. So I, I pulled some statistics here. One in six adults in England have low literacy levels. 10% of the population has some form of dyslexia. I'm sure these are very similar statistics across the European Union. Um, and as you know, people often speak more than one language in Europe as well. So the thing I like to highlight as well is make sure that you're ensuring the readability level of your website is not too high. We often um, scan websites and we have the ability to look at what the readability level is. And often it's at a college level, which is way too advanced. So really reducing sentence length or simplifying the language is incredibly important. I also always say uh, test test if you're if you're publishing a new page. Uh, web page, test the content or have someone who's not a native English speaker, for example, read through it. Or if if um, another language, let's say Dutch is your native language, have a non-native Dutch uh, speaker, read through it. If they can understand it, then it's a good uh, piece of content quality for your entire website. Awesome. And with that, I'll let Alex jump into our next tip. 
Cheers, Jasmine. Yep. Um, yeah, the next one, super important. Don't skip web accessibility. So, you know, wh why is this so important? I mean, th there's various stats out there, right? But roughly, you know, 20% of web users have some kind of disability, which, which means that they can't access um, things in the same way maybe a fully able user can. So it's really important to, to ensure that we're doing something about that, right? So if, if you own a website or, or manage a website, um, you obviously want to make sure that you are um, ensuring it's as inclusive as possible. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, the, there are laws around this in, in Europe. We have the, the EU Web Accessibility Directive. In the UK, we have the, the UK public sector bodies um, regulations now. So, you know, ensuring that we are making our website as compliant as possible in line with those guidelines is, is super important, right, to make sure we're not sort of missing out on anyone. Um, you know, main, maintaining it over time is, is also super important. It's not it's not a one off project, right? You know, accessibility is kind of a continuous thing. I think um, I'm sure most people on this call who, who look after websites, you know, you're you're adding content quite regularly. So, you know, yes, your, your site might be accessible today, but, you know, in a week or a month's time, once content editors have been in there adding new stuff, you know, things things can easily um, get broken, right? So ensuring that you stay compliant over time is, is really important. Um, and then, yeah, the final point on that is also ensuring that you, you kind of document your progress over time. So, you know, we, we want to make sure, well, firstly, you want to make sure that you actually have a have an accessibility statement on your website um, so that you're making people aware of, of what you're actually doing to ensure that your site is is accessible. Um, you know, if you've, if you've kind of gone from a certain place and things have improved, yeah, showcase that, right? Make, make people aware of, of all the things you're doing to ensure that the site's accessible. Um, and, and also, you know, there's, there's potentially different ways of, of doing it, but actually having the ability to allow end users on the site to to submit issues if they're finding them across the site, um, whether that's via a, a live chat or a feedback tool or something on the site um, is, is always beneficial. So yeah, really, really important subject. And, and you know, it's, it's one of those things where I think people are, you know, do, do take more notice of it these days. They are looking to make their sites more accessible, but also, you know, I, I know that we see when we scan websites, there are still, a, you know, there tend to be a lot of issues across uh, most people's websites. So still plenty of work to do on it, I reckon. Cool. All right. Um, on to the onto the third one here. Um, this one is, is more around um, kind of ensuring your site. It's all about consistency, really, across your your web estate. So, um, yeah, it, it kind of we look at three different things here. So sort of consistency around um, around branding. So, you know, the, these this could be quite simple things, you know, maybe maybe your organization name has to be spelled in a certain way or um, or, you know, certain colors, things like that, um, you know, critical information across the site, whether that's, um, you know, addresses, phone numbers, contact details, whatever. We, we want to make sure that that's consistent across the site. So it's good to have something in place um, to ensure that you're doing that. You know, most websites are, are thousands of pages, um, or particularly some of the bigger organizations out there, um, you know, or even, you know, education sites, university websites, we see some that are tens of thousands of pages. So you need something in place to ensure that the things are consistent across all of those. Um, consistency in terms of style as well, you know, that that's important. You know, it could be, um, you know, formats of, of phone numbers or dates, things like that. Um, you you want to make sure that whatever you've you've kind of got there, you know, it's good to have some kind of style guide as an organization for people to follow. You know, if you've got lots of web editors, you, you want to make sure that the people understand what the guidelines are for them to, to actually follow and, and then have a way of actually keeping them accountable to make sure they're actually following those guidelines that you have, right? Um, and then the final point is is on the, the, the language point um, as well. You know, any, you know, particularly in the, the private sector, obviously, you know, there's many organizations that have lots of different domains and in different languages um also even you know if we if we talk about the difference between british and, and american english as well you know we, we we'll often scan a site and see content written in both um and obviously that's that's not great we want to make sure that it's it's consistent in, in one way or, or the other so yeah a few important things to think around about just to, just with regards to sort of consistency in, in terms of brand and style guidelines across the site 
Awesome. Over to you, Jasmine. Uh, exactly. I mm. got the next. I got the next. I got the really fun topic of data privacy. <laughs> so, so uh, it's a little bit of a dry one, but data privacy is, of course, still hyper relevant in the European Union. And so, some of the things again that often get overlooked when it comes to data privacy in websites. First of all, um, in some countries, it is very, very normal to put out people's photographs, their um, their name, their email address, their phone numbers on the website. In all countries, that is not something that is um, generally accepted in organizations. So one of the things that I think is very important for you to have a discussion about within your organization is, are we okay with putting personal data on our website of our um, employees of our colleagues, for example, if you're working in a local council or a municipality, I know it could be quite normal to have that information. Um, but what about if someone leaves the organization? How do you make sure that you're removing that personal data because they're no longer part of your organization? So that is one of the things that I wanted to highlight as you're going into next year. Um, probably a good thing to take a look at just because data privacy is something that is continuing to come back in the European organization or in the European Union and the UK uh, as something of importance. Um, the other thing, of course, that you can't get away from um, if you have a website is cookies and cookie consent. So making sure that your cookies are uh, correctly categorized. Are they a statistics cookie? Is it a marketing cookie? Uh, making sure that um, cookie banners are easy to understand. I always use the example, could my grandmother, for example, figure out how to revoke consent on a cookie banner? If she can't, it's not simple enough, right? So even things like this in terms of data privacy, it needs to be straightforward. It is something that people need to um, be able to digest because it is something that is quite intrusive when you're uh, entering a website. And then of course, is it accessible? Uh, a lot of people are unaware that cookie banners and any type of pop-up banner are actually a very inaccessible practice and can be very a very frustrating experience for a user who is using, for example, a screen reader and they often get stuck in a loop and can't actually get into the website content because the consent manager is, uh, or cookie consent manager is blocking people from accepting cookies. And of course, also, what about are they on brand? I know it's it's not directly related to data privacy, but as a marketer and being passionate about making sure that we're all you're always on brand or making sure it is at least matching your colors, that is also something that um, is to be considered as well and making sure that you just have a very professional looking website. I think it can almost feel unprofessional or a little bit um, suspicious to come to a website that has one form of branding, but before you even able to access it, another pop-up with a completely different brand pops up, right? That might make me feel like, oh, is this the correct and official website or should I, should I be going somewhere else for my information? And then last but not least, of course, making sure that all your legal terms as you go into the new year, I know our lawyer will probably give me an updated version of our privacy policy and our uh, terms and conditions and all that good stuff. So yes, updates on those on those pages are necessary from time to time. They are otherwise very much something that I know we like to leave static as marketers and communicators and website managers, but making sure that you're going in and updating that everywhere is incredibly important. And depending on your industry, you may need other legal notices on your website. I know, for example, if you are selling any kind of product with food, for example, you might need to have the ingredients of the food or even pharmaceutical uh, companies, you will need to have the ingredients listed. And let's say you change a candy bar from eight grams of sugar to 10 grams of sugar, you're going to want to make sure that you're getting all of that um, information updated across um, your website. So a little bit more on the legal side than data privacy, but also very important from a compliance point of view. And I'll let Alex wrap up cool. our last tip. <laughs> Cool, good. Yeah, so this this um, this final kind of tip here is is more around sort of the the performance and, and user experience on on the site. So um, again, you know, there's there are some sort of industry expectations around it. You've got the the Google Core Web Vitals there, uh, and particularly if we're if we're talking about the the load speed of pages, right? That's 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 really important. You know, we're sure we all know when, when we're online. You know, again, we, we are quite impatient. If something takes a few seconds to load, we, we might well give up and go to a different site. 
you know, depends what sort of site it is. But, you know, if, if you have a site where you're selling something, for example, then potentially you could be missing out on, on customers, right, if you um, if you have slow load times. So, you know, we, we need to keep an eye on that and, and keep an eye on Google as well because they're, you know, they're always updating their their algorithms. And um, we need to ensure that we are kind of staying, you know, keeping our site up to date in line with those. And um making sure if you've got anything on your site that could be impacting the the load speed of pages i.e large images um we want to be careful of that so again being able to identify those and, and fix them where where appropriate um, is, is pretty important um different devices too is, is is another one to have a think about you know more than half of web users um, or web visits come from from mobile device these days so you know ensuring that your that the content on your site is is accessible and loads quickly on a on a mobile or a tablet again is is really important so being able to test your site both on both for browsers and and mobile is uh, is yeah you know something to to think about for sure um final point is more just around general kind of user experience and, and navigation you know is is the layout um good on, on the site? Does it allow people to, to find the things they want to find as, as quickly as possible? Um, again, you know, if you're maybe if you're going for a redesign and, and building a new site, it's, you know, it's great to A, B, test these things, you know, have, have two versions of a similar page, different layouts, figure out what, what works better for, for the users. Um, and again, you know, if we, if we think about um, being inclusive to, to everyone, we, we want to make sure that the, the navigation works um, for, for everyone, whether they're, uh, you know, experience web user inexperience elderly whether there's uh, you know disabilities there that could affect things it's important to think about all these things when we're you know in, in general just thinking about that that kind of a end user experience on the site awesome you, I, thanks yeah no so i'm just going to hop into a few uh real life examples so i talked to a couple of fellow marketers and communicators just about how they approach their website so um first of all i talked to pat uh, who is the VP of marketing at QN. And I just really wanted to understand because probably similar uh, to you, it's just no, nice to know that other people are being challenged by the same things, but also hearing some of their tips of um, how they're um, going after it. So his top challenge for uh, his website was trying to make sure, similar to what Alex was saying, that his website was in, had an effective, intuitive navigation to enable a wide range of personas to find the information they need. I think this is a great point. Using these kind of commonly accepted standards of um, how a web page layout is actually incredibly important. I know a lot of designers want to make websites really uh, pop and stand out, but it can actually be a very frustrating user experience if you're used to um about us and contact us information always being in the top right hand side of a website for example if all of a sudden someone only puts the contact us uh page in the footer in the very bottom of the footer and hidden behind a logo that would be a very frustrating um user experience enabling content editors to have flexibility while maintaining consistent design and usability i think Content collaboration is incredibly important no matter what website you're running uh, and making sure that you have strong content uh, content and style and brand guidelines, as Alex mentioned before, is an incredibly important thing to do and actually holding people accountable. Um, Pat also or Patrick also had some uh, great content tips. Um, test and short iterations, I think, goes back exactly to what Alex was mentioning. Do some A-B testing on things, but just do one uh, little piece at a time was, was Patrick's um, a suggestion. Just because if you're starting to change five different things instead of one thing on the website, it'll just create new issues where you're really unaware of what actually is improving your website and what's actually optimizing it, right? So I think this is an important thing that's often overlooked in, in website optimizations. People change five things, then they don't actually know which one is the one that um, created the improvement. I also talked to Maggie uh, from Webly. She heads up marketing there, and she also works very closely on their website. And some of her top challenges, which I'm sure some of you will also recognize, is maintaining multi-language websites. Multi-language websites or even uh, multiple domains, right, can be incredibly challenging and it's difficult to get an overview. Um, I think, again, always having a great tool or great processes in place is, is a good way to kind of set that up. Um, she also found it challenging to stick to routines and also 
through those routines, getting to those low hanging optimizations. And I think that's kind of um, also what Alex touched upon earlier is you need to prioritize what is a compliance issue in your organization and what is an optimization and divvy them up, who's tackling what, which one's top priority and so on. Her top tips were make sure you invest in a good web page template or layout as a base. A lot of issues can be um, solved at that level and it really helps speed up execution. Um, you, she recommended using a project management tool for visibility on website production tasks. I love that. We actually have uh, do a very similar thing. And the great thing is if we have issues in the Moncito tool, we can uh, copy a, a link directly to that issue, put it in the Asana task, and I can assign it to someone on our team to fix, for example. And then of course, creating a checklist for your website content contributors, whether uh, style and website guidelines can sound a little bit overwhelming. So sometimes a checklist right before they upload, making sure that they've added, for example, alt text, uh, or alt text on images or making sure that the file size of the image, for example, is not too big are kind of great ways to help keep your website clean over time. I also just pulled a couple of examples of how our clients tackle website optimization and compliance. I'm just going to leave this in here so that you guys can check out the slides, but these are some of our reviews on, on G2 of how people use it to kind of make site-wide changes and, and make sure that they're holding everyone accountable as they're putting um, information on their website. Great, and I'm going to let Alex wrap it up with some key takeaways before we jump into the Q&A. Cool. Cheers, Jasmine. Yeah, I can see a few uh, few questions are coming through as well, so we'll, we'll get to those in a in a second. Um, but yeah, firstly, just the the final part from me, really, just a few few key takeaways. So, um, I think the first point, right, with regards to to kind of knowing where to start, is is to to essentially do an audit of your of your website to understand how it's how it's currently performing. Um, yeah, that's the obvious place to start, really. You know, otherwise, you're you're not really going to know. Um, you know what's best to focus on focus on first so you know from a from a compliance side it's, it's understanding you know what regulate regulations apply to you as an organization in, in the region you're in um, you know and then you know determining with the things that you've you've kind of um, identified you know where are you at the moment with regards to, to compliance you know what needs improvement are there any things that are failing completely that are kind of urgent um, yeah pretty important to do that audit initially um if we then go to the next slide once we've once we've done that then we can um look to to kind of prioritize things right so you know when we're talking about content um obviously it, it makes a lot of sense to to try and kind of tackle those most uh, popular content issues first so you know if we're if we're using a, an analytics tool then obviously we can look to fix the pages that are being viewed the most first um if we're talking about documents we could look to to uh, improve on, on those documents that get downloaded the most. Um, and then of course, you know, it also makes sense to, to kind of go after any low hanging fruit. So, you know, if there's, say if there's a particular accessibility issue, like a, an image without alt text that affects, you know, tens or even hundreds of pages, for example, you know, fixing that could have a really positive effect across the whole site in, in one go. So you can so make, make some quick fixes, basically. Um, the third point is is kind of incorporating these these things into your strategic plan as a as an organization, right? So, you know the the key stakeholders um, they should be aware of things like like web accessibility. Sometimes sometimes they're not, um, and it's important that um, you know any kind of compliance around the website. You know we, we've talked about how important a website is for an organization. It's important that these things are actually kind of built into the, the overall strategic plan of the of the business. Um, so you know, if, you know, a big organization might have a, a compliance officer, for example, um, who can who can help with that. But um, you know, that's that's definitely a kind of an important thing to to think about moving forward. Um, onto the fourth one here. So you know, we, we kind of touched on this earlier in, in one of the slides, but in in general, just kind of being able to document your your ongoing compliance is is another area of, of focus. You know, if you're using technology products, then, you know, they've probably got some kind of history center in there that, that help monitor compliance over a period of time. Um, you know, it's, you know, because, you know, thing, things are always moving quite quickly. You know, we, we need to have something in place to, to be able to understand, yeah, kind of where are we at now? You know, where do we want to be in a month, six months, a year and, and track that over, over the period of time? Um, another thing to have a, have a think about as well is, is a web archiving solution. So, 
about a, about a year ago, Montito actually merged with a, another business, Archive Social, who actually have a, a social media archiving um, solution. Um, and again, that in, in that case, it yeah it gives you a full archive of social media posts. Um, but yeah, but a web archiving solution solution in general could be could be really useful, right? It allows you to go back and um, to a, any kind of period of time and, and kind of prove prove compliance around, you know, and it can be quite granular, right? Because you know, with accessibility, there's, there's there's tons of checks in there. It could be a specific thing that you want to go back to. So definitely important to have have that in place. And yeah, just a kind of a final final kind of recap from from myself, really, um, from the things that I've talked about there. I think, yeah, firstly, just a reminder of that first slide, you know, ensuring that you have different approaches in place for optimization versus compliance is definitely key. Um, secondly, you know, if, if you are a, a webmaster or an admin, um, a manager, yeah, you know, you, we want to make sure that we actually educate our content editors first so that they understand what they should and shouldn't be doing. Um, and, you know, having something in place to keep them accountable over time um, is, is obviously needed. Um, you know, regular maintenance of the site, again, as, as we said, you know, most websites are constantly evolving, content's been changed, added all the time. So, you know, you want to make sure you've got something in place to to check things over a period of time to to afford, you know, to avoid any, you know, issues kind of falling through the falling through the gaps. Um, and then, yeah, finally, you know, just just actually dedicating time for, for website compliance um, is is really important. And I think, you know, going back to that poll early on, obviously, I think the the majority of people were talking about um, time being one of the, the the things. So it's, you know, I think it's a case of kind of looking at your your schedule and figuring out in the the working day or working week, you know, whereabouts we're going to actually dedicate time to these important things specifically. Um, yeah, I think that's it from me. Back to you, Joe. Awesome. Jen. Thanks, Alex. So before we just hop into the Q&A, um, and I can feel free to start chatting in, we did also just want to offer, of course, uh, a free scan um, of your website. So I'm going to launch a poll right now, uh, but really how it will, if, there we go. I'm launching it. So really how it'll work is if you want, we'd be super happy to help you out with a free scan, helping you identify some of these issues and errors as you're going into the new year. Uh, if you're interested in seeing a demo of our website governance modules, we'd also be happy to help with that. Or if you're just curious to see if you have any issues or errors, um, again, we'd be really happy to help you with all of these. Um, I think you'll often be quite surprised because a lot of people are often very confident on the first maybe 10 pages of their website and are, are very confident that there's no issues and errors there. And that's true. It's not often on the first 10 pages, like your homepage and your other nine most visited pages where there's issues and errors. It's those other 500 or other thousand pages on your website that are not as frequently visited. So I'm just going to leave that open and that poll open. We have some resources in here. I'm not going to jump um, through, through them, but we'll add links to all of these. So when we send out the slide deck, you can check them out. And with that, I think we'll jump into Q&A and I will actually ask I start by answering the first question which is do you have a template for an accessibility statement that is a fantastic question i really really pleased to see someone asking about it because yes we actually have an ex a free accessibility statement generator on our website so um i actually had it on the resources slide so there is a link there or you can just go to moncito.com under resources and you will be able to find the accessibility statement generator so if you um, don't have that, um, have one yet, uh, that's definitely a, a great place to go. Let's see, the next question I have, and maybe Alex, uh, you want to answer this based off of your experience with many of our uh, clients and bringing them on board, but it is, when it comes to web accessibility, what do you recommend as the first step? Yeah, I think, well, I think, I think it kind of touches on that, that last, or one of those last slides I went through there. I think the, the first step really has to be the, the audit um, to understand how you're doing currently. Um, you know, if you, if you don't do that, it's, it's tricky because, you know, the, the web content accessibility guidelines um, have, yeah, endless checks within them. And, you know, it's difficult to know how many of those you're actually compliant with. So I'd say that the very first step is, um, yeah, to, to do the audit of the website get an understanding of where you're at currently. And then from there, you can, can kind of like prioritize the, the things you want to attack first, really. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. That's, um, it's always so important to find out where you are before you start um, 
creating a big budget around it. Great. And the next question we have, Alex, maybe you also want to take this one. Do you have recommendations for big teams working on a big website with several domains? And how can you keep efficient track of all of these different websites? Yeah, good, good question. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, um, I guess speaking from our, our own experience at, at Monsido, yeah, we, we work with a lot of large organizations with large websites and a number of websites um, yeah, globally. Um, you know, I think obviously having some kind of platform in place where you can get an overview of everything in that in that one place is is super important. Um, I think with with big teams as well, you know, you want to have something where you know there's there's access for everyone to to log in and get a view of the the parts of the website that's important to them. So you know, actually, because you know, if we scan a whole website and there's thousands of pages, it might be hard to know where to start. So you probably want to define user access by um, groups or or sections of the the site, um, and and even break it down um, into into to kind of modules or features as well, so that you know someone who's responsible for the I don't know the blog page on the, on the web the blog pages on the website they log in they just would see the results for that part um, and maybe they'd have a focus on accessibility for for example and they could just look at that so I think yeah for for big teams globally being able to tr tr drill down on the specific parts that are responsible that individuals are responsible for is um, is pretty key there really perfect and I think those were all of the questions that we had. So, and I'll just end the poll here. So if you did um, request a follow-up, please do stay tuned. We will uh, get in touch with you. But with that, I'm just gonna put mine and Alex's information here. Feel free to reach out to us. Please feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn as well um, for website tips and tricks. I know we're both quite keen on, on sharing some thoughts there every now and then. Um, but with that, we just really want to say thank you for joining us and spending 45 minutes of your day with us. I know we 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 kept it right on time, Alex. So I'm very, very pleased. Good effort. Good effort. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you, everyone, and wishing you a, a lovely day. And thank you so much. Thanks. Bye.